everybody, and welcome to our very first, um, moving pictures commentary. Oh, this is gonna be different, isn't it? Yes, this is gonna be something a little bit different from what we normally do, but then again, we don't really have a normal thing just yet. Uh, this is an idea that Gumi had, where we watch something, and then we watch it again while giving commentary via Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. Yeah, and dropping some actual, actual commentary here and there. Not just making jokes, but, like, I've got a bunch of trivia and whatnot to show. Because the, um, the first movie that we're doing this with, consider this our, our pilot commentary, is the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, fun. Yay! Yeah. I'm so, so excited. So the way that this is going to work is, obviously, we cannot show you the entire movie with the audio because that's copyright infringement so this is going to be audio only uh there will probably be a still picture on the youtube version so that you you have something to look at right and this is basically a riff track like you can watch the movie alongside us like if you have it available to you and listen to our commentary whilst the movie is playing yes that that's the idea that's the general idea with Yes. So um, the way that this is going to work is um, the point that we're at now, we are right at the start of the movie, right before or right during the um, Hollywood Pictures logo. You can see the black outline of the Sphinx and you can see the blue circle behind it, but that is literally as far in as we are. So go ahead and get to that point in whatever um, version of the movie you're using. If you have that in your version of the movie. <laughs> it's It's part of the movie. They most likely have it. Don't don't make assumptions. I, and you shouldn't make assumptions either. <laughs> well, I mean, most most versions of the movie are going to have the uh, the studio logos at the beginning. But anyway, uh, you will hear a series of four beeps. Right when the fourth beep sounds, that's when you want to hit play to sync up with us. So uh, uh, see, we're going to start the commentary now. Uh, see you guys in a second. Yep, and enjoy. Oh boy, this logo always fills me with so much hope and joy and love and life. This logo fills me up with my love of the Egyptian mythology. I'm sure it does. As you've spoken um, of plen plenty of times, Light Motive, there's a, there's a name that you won't see nowadays. This is the movie that actually uh, ended up bankrupting, the bankrupting them. Um, I can imagine. Yep, yeah, Hollywood Pictures Presents... Proudly, I'm sure. God, there were a lot of... Um, I didn't realize there were a lot of studios on this. Oh my god. Look at this. <laughs> it's, it's, this, is the, this is the sort of stuff you would see on an early Amiga computers. Like, this is pre-Flash animation right here. I thought that it was going for, like, an infrared look. No, no, that's just how the movie looks. I mean, my god, look how... Why are they speaking with a Brooklyn accent, might I ask? Because this is where Brooklyn is going to be. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the Brooklyn accent did not come around <laughs> 65 million years ago. Oh, and here comes the, uh... Yeah, goodbye dinosaurs. Oh, Thank bye you for dinosaurs! <laughs> <laughs> and here's our premise for the movie. It's an alternate dimension one. And you might have noticed a few big name actors are attached to this movie. Like we had Bob Hoskins' name and Dennis Hopper just appeared on uh, on the screen. So, yeah, they they spared no expense in getting good actors for this in movie. In the future, everything is chrome. <laughs> <laughs> and in the past. <laughs> yep. This is uh, Brooklyn 20 years ago. And then the present is going to be Brooklyn in the 90s. So it's also going to be in the past. So, uh, while we're waiting for this really serious and kind of weird, uh, tonally dissonant opening to finish, I'd just like to point out, um, first big fact about the movie. This had a budget of $48 million when it was being made. That's, 48! Yeah, that's not counting the advertising budget because that's always counted separately. Would you like to take a guess as to how much money this brought in at the box office? Total lifetime sales. I got nothing. Uh, 
just under 21 million. So it did not even make back half of its budget. Okay, so it made a lot more than I thought it did. <laughs> That's being generous. <laughs> But yeah, it it did not manage to make back enough money to even really justify its existence. And like I said, this movie basically bankrupted uh, Light Motive, uh, so they don't do anything. And it was directed by a husband and wife duo called uh, named Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel. Look, it's a gift from God. <laughs> It's a giant egg that pretty much destroys our entire religion if it's actually proven to be real. Because, you know, the whole Noah's Ark thing and the dinosaur bones were a big thing when they were first discovered. What's up with her hair? Like, it's it's just very messy. She ca She's running she from a dictator. She's got, she's got, like, her bangs in the shape of a ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're in an old subway tunnel, and oh boy, here comes our villain! There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Academy Award-nominated actor Dennis Friggin' Hopper as King Koopa. Not Bowser, Koopa. Who, yes, I know Koopa is called Koopa in the, in the Japanese version, but come on, this was made, this was a US and UK co-production. It was, you're aiming for an American market, they could have called him Bowser. I'm kind of glad that they didn't because... Bowser is way too intimidating of a name for Dennis Hopper's character in this movie. They're handling this baby hatching from an egg pretty well. Oh yeah, like the I would just like MST3K describes the faces that these nuns that those nuns had right there as um dull surprise. That was the look on their face. Sweetie, you can't quote other people that have riffed this movie. While we are riffing this movie. They haven't riffed it. It's way too recent. <laughs> but anyway, yep. Yeah. So here we are in the Mario Brothers apartment. <laughs> and I, I kind of like <clears throat> the aesthetic of this place. Like, they have tools hanging off the walls. Uh, they had, like, uh, baby shoes bronzed on the wall that were actually, like, tiny little plumber boots. <laughs> yep, and here's... Because plumbers! And here we are. I will say this about the movie. Bob Hoskins was a great choice for a Mario. Like, this was before Charles Martinet gave him the voice that he would be most associated with. And I like that rough Brooklyn accent that he has here. John Leguizamo, though, I don't think was very good casting for Luigi. I loved playing with those things when I was a kid. Oh! Jesus. Why would you do that? Those were steel toe boots! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did look that did look painful. I'm pretty sure that was a genuine reaction, especially since his face was hidden. I don't think he knew Hoskins was going to do that. Can I just say how disgusting it is that... They, I can't imagine that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel so badly that he actually scooped up the crumbs back into the snack bowl. Well, they do make it seem like they're really, really desperate for money. So, yeah, I would actually say that's pretty accurate. So, um... What's up with Luigi's accent? It's so, it's so different. It's, uh, John Leguizamo. Like, he's trying to go for, uh, for something like a New York accent, I think. But, um, it, it's a little bit off-putting. And it's not helped by the fact that, um... There's a 20-year difference in age between Hoskins and Leguizamo here, and you can kind of tell. So, the fact that they are supposed to be brothers in this movie is, um, really weird to me. Where's the leak, ma'am? <laughs> ah, Spongebob. I, I hate your <coughs> sense of anti-humor. I love my sense of anti-humor. Okay, so now we're cutting over to the other big thing. Apparently, there was, um, there's a building being built here, and they discovered dinosaur bones underneath it. Um, which I don't think has ever happened before in the history of, uh... Ever? New York? <laughs> Brooklyn, specifically? I don't know. I ha I don't really keep up on the archaeological news, so I don't know if, like, dinosaur bones have turned up in a cityscape before. I'm sure they have, maybe. I do. I like this character right here, Scapelli. Like, this is the only real scene in the movie that he has, and he just comes off as delightfully sleazy. 
right here. <coughs> oh, and there's our princess, by the way. That's the baby that hatched from the egg. Spoilers, by the way. I'm I'm doing this commentary under the assumption that you have already watched the movie at least once. But yeah, isn't she like not even Princess Peach? Isn't she Daisy? Yeah, her name is uh, Daisy in this, which makes sense because it's her and Luigi that end up uh, going for a romantic angle here, not her and Mario. Yeah, which is probably why they decide to go with Daisy. But at the same time, where's Peach? There is no Peach. In, Only uh... Zool. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> and here's our comic relief for the movie. Um, Iggy and Spike. I don't really know which one is which. That was actually a, a, a semi-clever joke when I was like 10. They say it's made of dog and they're eating hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep in mind, like, alternate dimension. They don't have this kind of food there, I guess. Here's your next fun fact. I can't remember if it was this particular scene or the cop scene later on. Um, I think it was the cop scene, but I, I find it very interesting. Uh, anyway, um, Hoskins and Leguizamo hated working on this movie so much that they started doing shots of tequila between takes because they were so fed up with how this movie was being run. Uh, so they were drunk on set most of the time, and due to that... At one point, Leguizamo accidentally crushed uh, Bob Hoskins' hand in a, uh, in, a, in a car door. And I can't remember if it was the van door or, again, if it was the cop door from a scene later down the line. But yeah, uh, because of that, Hoskins actually had to wear a flesh-colored cast on his hand for the rest of filming. Yikes. Yeah. It was pretty bad. That wasn't the only injury either. Like, one of the directors, I think it was um, Annabelle Jenkel. I think it was the, uh, I think it was her, if I remember reading this correctly, who, um, she got drunk one night um, while driving to the set and ended up running over Leguizamo with a car, breaking his leg. And you can actually see, it, it's blink and you miss it, but you can actually see his leg cast and... Um, Hoskins, uh, flesh-colored cast at certain points in this movie because they had to keep filming even though one of them had a broken hand and the other had a broken leg. That's insane. Oh, yeah. The, the movie was supposed to be shot in six weeks. It took them 20. Um, Sweetie, it did... I really think that some of the people that are watching this along with us, like, I'm sure a lot of them love your fun facts, but a lot of them also came to just make fun of this movie with us. Well, I don't hear you making any jokes. Because you keep talking about the facts. Well, they're Look, interesting facts. <laughs> missing Miss is still a mystery. Yeah. There's a, a mystery afoot. It's a good, uh... It's a good headline. But yeah, that's another big plot point of the beginning of this movie is that a bunch of women around Brooklyn have been going missing. It's because of the comedy relief. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert after the spoiler. <laughs> good old, good old comedy relief being competent at their, semi-competent at their, they're not competent at all. They are not competent even a little. Yep. So he, um... I hate the fat. I hate this relationship, by the way. Do you? The two of them are so awkward on screen. And, like, they try to portray it as, like, charmingly awkward. But the two of them just have no chemistry together. It probably doesn't help that he's drunk. Yeah, that definitely doesn't help. Um, yeah, by this point in the movie's filming, I'm pretty sure that they were doing tequila pretty regularly. And I don't think anybody else was doing that. I think it was just Hoskins and Leguizamo. Hopper uh, does tell a very amusing story about why he did the movie, though, where um, he says his son came up to him and asked him why he did the Super Mario Brothers movie. And he said, well, so I could afford to buy you shoes, son. And his son just goes, Dad, I didn't need shoes that badly. Ow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no! It's a good, it's a good line, though. It is a good line. What happened to her hair? Um. Well, it's windswept, obviously. 
because I mean, like, they, they don't have doors on that van. It's very, very dangerous. Fair, I guess. <laughs> and I think they have a fan actually positioned on her right now. I think. <laughs> <laughs> to make her hair blow back, because I don't think... Because look would... at how majestic and beautiful yeah. she is. Yeah, I, I seriously doubt that is a natural wind that is happening right there. <laughs> so the movie's been pretty boring so far. <laughs> I w it's a very slow start to a, to a movie, which is not a good sign. I mean, the entire movie has red flags all over it. Yep. Look at the size of those meatballs. Yeah, yeah. Right, isn't that entertaining? Because they're they're the Mario Brothers. They eat spaghetti. Yep. Brooklyn-born Italian family, and uh, this is Daniela, who is Mario's love interest in this movie. His girlfriend. Completely missed opportunity. Of being able to call her uh, Pauline. Yeah, yeah, I will agree with that. They should have called her Pauline in this movie. I mean, she couldn't. Even, she could have even <coughs> passed as a Pauline. Look at her. Yeah, uh, she she could have been a Pauline. <laughs> I will say though, I do like um, I do like the fact that they tried and they tried to find the most stereotypically Italian woman that they could to be his girlfriend in this movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I mean, she just like. Her mannerisms are very obviously supposed to be stereotypical Italian. Um, if you can actually hear the movie. <laughs> you know, w with what I said in mind, like, she could be Pauline. I look at her and I'm just like, that is definitely, like, is that Daisy? Like, my brain has so many conflicting signals when I look at her because just like, well, she's got blonde hair like Peach, but she's kind of tomboyish like Daisy. Uh... Yeah. Um, worth noting, this movie went through a lot of rewrites. Uh, so I think they sort of folded a few characters into one another. Are you yawning? No, I'm not. You were <laughs> yawning. I was not yawning. It didn't pick up on the capture, so you don't need to tell people that I was yawning. She was yawning. I wasn't yawning. You're going to make the audience yawn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making the characters in the movie yawn. <laughs> so there they go. You got to not say these things out loud. <laughs> Why? Why not? Because it's affecting the movie, too. <laughs> So, comic relief again, deciding that they're gonna go and kidnap Mario's. Uh, they're gonna girlfriend. go get Pikachu. Yeah, because they don't actually recognize that that's not Daisy. Oh God, that was a hit and run. I I don't doubt that that was not in the script. It just sort of <laughs> happened. <laughs> With the way that this movie's production went, <laughs> yeah, I actually think I actually think you might be right. Especially since, um, I can't remember their names, but the actors playing Iggy and Spike, they improvised a lot of their lines. They didn't bother learning their lines at all. Uh, huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Which, actually, a lot of actors in this movie didn't bother to memorize their lines because the script was being rewritten as they were shooting, so every time they'd walk in... Great menus yeah. publication. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, an entire publishing house just for menus. I know, that. that's that's what I was focused on while you're talking. <laughs> I'm just like, the hell? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> Sweetie, you're interesting. Your facts are very interesting. I, I'm sure they are, but menus are more interesting. <laughs> well, just the random stuff in the I back. call I call BS on this by the way there is no well this goes to show what I know as somebody who has never lived in a city but I fail to see how these two guys could run up and kidnap her right off the street like this while she is screaming her head off in the middle of Brooklyn look at them they're having fun together now that they're racing when was the last time you raced anybody like this didn't we race the other day Shut up, I'm trying to make a point that nobody does that. 
<laughs> it, it's it's so romantic and whimsical. Uh, just just yeah. like their relationship already is. Yeah, they've known each other for 12 hours at this point, and they're oh. already making a connection. Also, can I just say that that, like, uh, that archaeologist dig site looked like i don't it, it looked like um a barbie house <laughs> kind a, of. a barbie house it kind of looked like so, so, that's what i'm trying to go for here like a like a doll play set or something mm. L- like it, it looked like it could be like a house with a fake yard and like lights on and just like it, it just didn't look like an archaeological dig site. It was probably a leftover set from another production, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was and, he just biting his lip there? Just like, yeah, getting close. Yeah. And then he had the whole... When she said that the that the skeleton was beautiful, he says, you're beautiful. And then they start leaning in for the kiss. And I want to make it clear, I know that in movies, relationships kind of have to move fast. But this seems very unrealistic, especially since, again, these actors don't really have a lot of chemistry. Yep. Oh, here's another one of my favorite transitions here. Keep in mind, Mario took the van home. They ran all the way back to this apartment to get Mario, to get the van and the tools and go back, and the the site still isn't flooded. (laughs) Look at that. Because cell phones don't exist yet. Well, yeah, it's the... Well, they do, but they're very expensive, don't you know? Very, very expensive. A flip phone in the 90s was like, what? A million dollars? That's right. I I didn't get my first cell phone until like 2008. I can appreciate that they actually had them do, you know, plumber things in the movie. Yeah. I mean, like... Nintendo doesn't even really acknowledge the fact that Mario and Luigi are plumbers anymore. It's sort of like an artifact. I mean, what about Super Mario 3D World where they repair that pipe? Yeah, they repaired it by hitting it a lot with a wrench and a hammer. And they didn't... A magic wrench and hammer. There was no indication that they were magic tools. They exist in the Mushroom Kingdom. Everything is magical. Well, you you don't know that the tools came from the Mushroom Kingdom. I mean, going by the original logic of them being from Brooklyn, those could have been the tools <laughs> going, that they brought with going them. Going by the logic of the Mushroom Kingdom, that hammer and wrench could suddenly grow a pair of eyes and be like, glad we could be of assistance. You know what? That's, uh, that's actually a much better movie. Congratulations. You've <laughs> written a much better movie. How is that a better movie? Like, it, it, It'd be more interesting than this. A wrench and a ha- hammer coming to life? Yes. Yes. It'd be like the Indian in the cupboard, except it'd be the wrench in the tool shed. <laughs> they knock them out with flashlights. Have you ever gotten hit in the back of the head with a flashlight? Like, those things can lay you out. Especially, the, like, the, the bigger, chunkier ones. That's no you joke. Know hey, you know what? I'm thinking back to a really heavy flashlight that I used to own. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why a lot, like, cops are uh, equipped with heavy flashlights so that they can use them as makeshift batons if you give them crap. But they weren't knocked out super long. No, no, they got right back up and no no like, massive head trauma or bumps or anything. I've been knocked out. Oh, I'm back up. <laughs> and now we're going to see where most of the budget in this movie went. <laughs> this one scene? Not, well, thanks for spoiling the joke, but, like, this is where a lot of the special effects budget went, I should say. As we are about to see. Look at this. You remember my joke about the Amiga earlier? There it is again. (laughs) Windows couldn't do that shit. Sabrina Online would be proud. (laughs) My god, that is so... Oh my god! (laughs) That is so creepy. Right. That's a plot point. Yep. I will admit, though, like, for all the faults of this movie, like, the special effects for the time are kind of decent. I will say that much. Hmm. I mean, they're alright. 
again for 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 the time like what what all else came out around the same time as this movie do you remember i don't because i don't remember exactly when this came out this was um i believe hang on i've got the i've got the wikipedia article open right in front of me <laughs> really yeah okay it was it came out in 93 so yeah we both would have been like 4 years old at the time or so i so. have no idea then I, yeah. I was more later on in like 97 and 98 watching the three ninjas movies Really? Oh my god! <laughs> Watch oh! out! <laughs> yeah, I again. <laughs> it's just in the same pose, twirling around. Yeah, I'd like to think that the way they filmed that was they just had him lay on top of a uh, a green screen or a blue screen, and then just had him roll back and forth, and then animated over that. Okay, can we? Hang on, I'll I'll get him. Yeah, we've got a cat in here who is currently crawling all over my girlfriend. This is great YouTube commentary. I told you we needed to get him out of the room before we started this movie. I... Oh, don't! Ah! Ow! Oh. Out you go. There you go. It's a pity we're not actually we don't actually have a camera on us, or we could have. Film the cat for great YouTube money, even though our channel's demonetized now. Hashtag where's the love? Koopa Square. Oh yeah, now we're in we're actually in the parallel universe. This is actually where the movie starts to get a little bit more interesting. Look, it was Thwomp. This is totally a Mario Brothers movie. Vote for Koopa. And there was Bullet Bills. Uh, I told you it said vote for Koopa. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I guess he is playing it actually being a, a president, even though he's a dictator. Oh my god, it predicted Trump. <laughs> he kind of looks like him. <laughs> now, don't you dare insult Dennis Hopper that way. If if Trump had if Trump had cornrows in that toupee of his, yeah, he would look yeah. like Now, again, I have to give this movie credit. I really like the design of this world. It's beautifully dystopian. Like, it it just looks horrible in the best way. But what's with the cars looking like they're bumper cars? Yeah, the whole thing about that is, like, they, they run off of some sort of electricity grid or something like that. Um, but half the time, they're those prongs that are sticking up aren't touching that electricity grid yeah yeah like they get it they get it from the air don't it don't you know like they they get it from the air and then they charge up whenever they go on the on the uh on the rails and, and it seems like we're putting more <laughs> i love this part <laughs> why why would you be walking an egg around in a friggin stroller and why would you want to steal the egg? Why did he just <laughs> run his bike straight into the railing? It's just like, I'm just going to go this way then. Well, I've got no brakes on this thing. And, well, YOLO. And I love how, like... Dun, dun, dun. They I love how they treat mammals' existence in this world. It's like, I was a teenage mammal. It's like, what? Yeah, like they, they treat it like it's... um they they basically treat it like they're aliens yeah like it's a non-existing thing and yet i think that they don't they eat mammals or something yeah they constantly reference eating like smaller mammals which i guess are like treated as a delicacy in this world and here's here's our main man again god is he not threatening at all Also, um, there was no ADR in this scene, which is why he's echoing so much, and it feels really weird. I'm trying to, like, wait, did his fingers just move normally? I thought that they were covered in some sort of clay substance, not gloves. Yeah, that was, um... Oh, that, I'm King Koopa! Oh. That was because they probably had to do two takes of this scene, if I had to guess. Two or three or four or five different takes. How do you know she's the princess? <laughs> now his fingers are covered in foam. Yeah. Or bits and pieces of, uh, of 
Kleenex. Like they, off, like they clean off more and more between each take. Yeah. <laughs> and they're dirty again. Jesus Christ. Good, good, good consistency. This is this good movie. Forty-eight million dollars. <laughs> we need that meteorite. It contains the soul of Princess Peach. I need to marry Princess Peach. And this is another thing going back to like your observation about how they treat mammals. They treat plumbers like be just being a plumber is something to get you in in trouble here. They have a literal plumber alert. <laughs> it's like plumbers, of course. Plumbers. Plumber alert. Uh -huh. Oh god. Oh god, that sound. Like just the sound of those things snapping as he put puts the button uh -huh. around them. Jesus Christ. Good sound design, though. Sweetie, I think I just saw you amongst that crowd. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this, this sweet old lady shtick. I remember you laughing really fucking hard at this scene for some reason. And I can't remember why. Let, let's, let's watch and find out. Well, we gotta keep talking. <laughs> yep. Where was she hiding that thing, by the way? Because I don't see much place on her person where she could hide something that big. <laughs> That's why! Oh, yeah. <laughs> she just grabs her by the way. <laughs> and flings her off the side. And the guy doesn't even bother to stop, either. <laughs> and then she just attacks the person in the car! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that one was impressive. Oh, and here's how they jump. See, this is totally Mario movie. We're jumping. Whoosh. Good effect. Really good effect. <laughs> I love how, like, casual she is. Yeah, that's that's some fantastic wire work. <laughs> and notice the rapid camera cuts as well. Like, there was a lot of uh, practical effect that they had to hide there. And zoom in on her breasts. I want a nice big shot of the rock between her breasts and also her breasts. And here we have Toad. I, I love the fact that Toad in, in this entire movie, in this scene and the next scene where we see him, he is essentially just there for exposition. Like, that is his entire purpose in this movie, is to dump exposition on us. And to carve his hair into cro <laughs> crop circles. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that makes what? him look like a mushroom, you know? Tools! Plumbers! <laughs> I just noticed the, <laughs> the studded word police on his... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... It, it, it's like somebody... That was the scene. That was where the, the hand got crushed. Oh. Yeah, when they were slamming those bars against uh, against it. Like, uh, they obviously did not use the take where it happened, but yeah, that's where it happened. And here are all... The, I love the fact that one of the kidnapped girls in the background there is just doing friggin' Pilates or yoga. Like, she had her leg raised up in the air. Like, if I, I'm getting paid for this either way. I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. I don't think that they rightly cared. Yeah. I mean, most of them don't even have a line of dialogue anyway. Oh, there's a speeding vehicle coming right towards me. Oh, let's just casually step aside. Yep. And that's how they break. Like, th this, this world seems like it's slightly more futuristic, but how do they not have brakes in the vehicles? Seriously. And oh. They do. They do later, too. But, yeah. The... <laughs> First name, Mario. Last name, Mario. And, again, I'd just like to point out that the, the police chief is getting a, a, a heel massage from, like, a, a hooker or something off to the side here. Like, she's just digging the heel into his shoulder like that. <laughs> Mario Mario and Ouija Mario. Yep. 
and everybody collectively lost their minds at that. Like, there's even arguments to this day about whether or not somebody made that canon, I think. <laughs> which is which is dumb, but there you go. <laughs> Thanks for the exposition, Toad. You see what I mean? <laughs> this whimsical music. It's nice of them to put a welcome sign above the police station here. Good joke. This is pre this is pretty dark for a kids movie. We're making a head a headshot joke in a Mario movie. <laughs> Weren't there aren't those bullet holes on the wall? Uh yes, yes they are. So I can understand the misconception. Yep. Well, it's like that Asdaf joke. Hey guys, check out my new camera. Oh wait, this isn't the camera. Why does everybody have like spiky plastic on their clothes? Because it's meant to look futuristic and dystopian, and uh, <clears throat> spiky things are dystopian and punkish. In the future, everyone will wear black leather and sunglasses. It's Kyle's favorite time. <laughs> It's a good thing Kyle doesn't watch these videos. When I see his hair, I just want to trail my finger <laughs> in it. Like, on the bald spots of his head specifically. Yeah. Just like... And you know that's not that's not a headpiece either. The poor guy actually did have to shave his head like that for the part. Why? Like, why, why was that a requirement for the part? Because it looks cool. Okay, so... Now we have the epic first meeting between our heroes and the main villain of this story, and it's basically him acting like he's their uh, lawyer to get them out of jail. Again, it's just like... <sighs> like, this movie... Oh, he finally wants to shake my hand! Yay! <laughs> this movie could have been... Could have been a lot better if it didn't have Super Mario attached to it, I think. Like, it still wouldn't have been a good movie, but there wouldn't have been an expectation attached to it. And, again, this movie... <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. Like, I love that he calls him a clown. It's like, who's this Koopa clown? I'm like, well, I hear he has a clown car. <laughs> <laughs> the... You mentioned that this actually was in production around the same time as, like, it got released three years later, but yeah, this was right after Super Mario World was released, so. So was that just, like, a weird coincidence? <laughs> no, I think that was timed, because again, they, again, another spoiler, but we do have a, Yo uh, a thing calling itself Yoshi later in the movie. And there's there's always a nice uh, a nice feeling when somebody's trying to push your eyes back into your skull. Yeah, <laughs> I don't enjoy that. My face. You okay? Uh, I'm just having. You're thinking about it now. Yes. <laughs> Why did you have to draw attention to it? Because it was funny. And once again, <laughs> excuse me. Exposition. Yep. So here we are. There was actually a um, a cut scene from this that was actually that actually leaves a plot hole in this scene, where one of the scientists actually accidentally gets caught in the machine and gets turned into a puddle of slime, which is the reason why. Uh, later in the scene, one of the guards ends up tripping. He trips on the slime that used to be the scientist. See, it's not there right now. It was going to happen a little bit later into the scene. But you're going to see a puddle of slime on the floor that wasn't there before. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll keep an eye open for it. Yeah, you'll see it. So here's the big premise of this to fit in with the dinosaur motif. He has the ability to evolve and de-evolve um, people into simpler life forms. And here we have an example of that. A Goomba. 
which is no longer a cute little chestnut mushroom, but this thing. It's Sherman the Shrunken Head. <laughs> I, I I kind of unironically like them, though. Why? They're cute. Like, they're nowhere near as vicious or threatening as, like, they try to make them out here. But, like, the, the, the animatronics for the head and the way they look, there's just something cute and endearing about them. I just want to pinch their little scaly cheeks. Why does he have such a deep voice with such a tiny head? I know that he has a big bulking body, but that head does not match at all. Like, did they think that this would be intimidating? In any way, shape, or form? Again, it comes down to the rewrites, because originally when they were doing this as a science fiction movie, it was going to be very dark and very cynical. But then the executives got a hold of it and decided to rewrite as much of the movie to be kid-friendly as they could. Here you go, a harmonica. He doesn't even have lips. How can he play it? Why did he give him a harmonica there? I, I don't know. It was something that Toad had earlier, and they gave it back to him for some reason. And here we go. See it right there. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah, then they, they get him in it and push him back in, and for some reason it doesn't take. Um, but oh, It, it kind of takes? A little... For a second. And, and he's fine. You know, I wondered about that puddle now that you've uh, told me what it is and everything. Like, I wondered about it back when we uh, watched this the other day because I was like, wait a minute, was that like residue from when the other dude transformed and just like he gets out and just a bunch of slime fell off him? My brain filled in the plot hole with logic so that it would make sense to me. <laughs> Which is kind of what you do when you watch a movie of any kind because... Um, not to break the illusion or anything, folks, but every movie, no matter how good or bad they are, have plot holes. Because there's no way that it could be airtight with the run times that a movie has. It's just, if the movie is really well written and really, really good, you don't notice the plot holes. And pointing out plot holes is sort of a douchey thing to do with a good movie. But when a movie makes no effort to hide the problems that it has... Like this movie, the, the, the plot holes are so notable and noticeable that uh, you can't help but comment on them. I'm surprised those fireballs weren't hitting any of the people in the cages. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. They're all in chicken coops. They're all sitting ducks. Not to mention, like, um, big big guns that fire big fireballs seem very impractical to me. And by the way, there are no cops wandering around in... There's a cop right there! <laughs> and they don't even question the fact that there are two non-uniformed people just wa wandering around here. There was another cop. Well, he was kind of distracted. He was pulling along his gimp, so... <laughs> oh! <laughs> and remember, kids, if you play lots of video games, you could drive a car just like Luigi does here. Because he, he figures out how to use the computer system because he plays lots of video games. So go out and buy Super Mario World, available now from Nintendo. That seems like a practical engine just spraying off sparks all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, don't you know, that's what all electric cars are going to be like in the future. And that's what guns are going to be like in the future. I mean, look at this. Look at those... Fl the they didn't even add in a fireball flying at it. It was just a little flamethrower going poof, Well, poof. one of them did actually have a fireball fling out of it, but it was like, it appeared like 10 feet away. Y yeah, like, this... <laughs> there, there's no consistency with the weapons that they're using, which I guess does make it kind of funny, but, um... <laughs> Whoa, oh. cool aliens! Whoa, Mario Mario! <laughs> Wait, were you doing Mario or Luigi there? Luigi. Okay, this Luigi, yes. <laughs> so yeah, this is the car this is our big car chase scene in a Mario movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just a random <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we've already seen that the the um the streets are not exactly si that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot about that scene, and I just it just hit me. Like, 
there is so much tonal dissonance in this movie, and that comes from the fact that they tried to combine the cynical and the silly scripts together. What? Well, well, why did that happen? <laughs> No, they tried to combine two totally different movies together, and because of that, there's no consistency in the tone or the rationality of this movie. So you get this really goofy car chase after what was supposed to be a pretty serious scene of watching Toad get turned into a monster in what looked like a very painful fashion. Oh wait, and then they keep shooting at each other. And blow each other up when they couldn't blow up Mario's car. Yeah, because you know, if you're going to be a cop, you have to have really poor reflexes and reaction time like that. I mean, it seems like everybody in this dimension is kind of stupid. Just, uh, either, either, yeah, yeah. I can't think of another good way to, uh, describe it. Now here, like... Luigi tricks him into going into the tunnel, and I'm like, that's not a good way to portray your characters. Like, if one of them doesn't trust the other enough to actually do as they say, there's a bit of a problem there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and now we're going to the Kupahari Desert. Fun fact, um, Paper Mario used that name. That is the... That, <laughs> excuse me. Kupahari Desert is the name of the desert area in that game. And I'd like to think that Nintendo was referencing this movie, even though they most likely weren't. They probably forgot that was a thing. Probably. Yep. Wow, look at that model car. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your effects budget at work right there. The fungus, it saved us. It does look really cool, though. What, the fungus? Yeah, I mean, that's actually a really cool effect. The I, I wish I knew how they made that that, uh, that fungus effect, because it actually looks really good. Silly string and food coloring. <laughs> You'd need a lot of silly string. Exactly. So you're saying they spent their entire effects budget on silly string? <laughs> sure! <laughs> <laughs> that face <laughs> just cut to him with that face just like <laughs> I'm in the middle of pooping <laughs> Midori you know don't do that <laughs> now you are wading through the poop <laughs> Jesus Christ Midori stop it <laughs> my steaming hot dino clay poop <laughs> I do love the fact that he's just casually up to his neck in mud. Uh, like, you know that it had to have taken them, like, a good hour to rinse him off after this scene. I hope he's wearing a swimsuit under there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make that face. That's the face that Pacha makes when he says just right. <laughs> <laughs> he just needed his hands like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an interesting outfit. Yeah, I was about to say, like, are my breasts squished enough? <laughs> you know, they say stripes make things look bigger and longer. Optical <sighs> illusions and all that. And here's where we get the big reveal, even though it was already kind of stated to us. Daisy's the... Daisy's the princess. Princess Daisy? Hi! I'm pretty sure that da Daisy and Peach are not related, by the way. No, they're not. Hi, I'm Daisy. No, because in the official canon, like, Daisy is from Sarasaland. Sarasahasalalala. Exactly. It's like the it's like the um elder from Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. You know, Sahasrala. Shashquash banana. That doesn't work if somebody's not actually falling. No, no, it doesn't. <clears throat> no. And he missed the robotic voice that said, it, "He's evolving, not de-evolving." Oh, I'm sure that he overheard it, but he's stupid. Yes, this is true.
it's funny how they had such little brains beforehand, and now even with bigger brains, they're still the comedy relief. Yeah, they're still, they are still morons. They just got a bigger vocabulary. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Which is um, honestly not very nice to people who actually are fairly intelligent. Basically say, it's basically saying that it doesn't matter if you're made more intelligent, you're still a moron. You know what probably would have been better here than just using like a, like, fake named cousins for Bowser? If they actually named these two after a couple of the, uh, the Koopalings. Well, one of them is Iggy. Oh! As Spike, I think, is named after one of the enemies from, that was introduced in Mario World. Like, what? No, it was in Mario 3 when he was first uh, introduced. Those guys who pull spike balls out of their mouths and throw it at you. That's Spike. Oh. But yeah, the, it's a little bit inconsistent that one of them is named after a Koopaling and the other is not. Though they were added... Um, they were added in the latest version of the, uh, of the script. Again, to add comic relief. Um... There wasn't actually any uh, any reference to the Koopalings in the earliest drafts of this, which was actually supposed to be a fantasy film. We have to make sure you look like Marilyn Monroe before you see the Master Koopa. You sure it's Marilyn Monroe? I was thinking more, um, more Madonna. <laughs> Sweetie. Or she maybe a really aged up Shirley Temple. Uh, for the first one, she does not have giant cones on her chest oh my god why does everybody immediately go to the cone bra when they think of madonna she has worn other outfits you know i know but still it's iconic <laughs> and second of all shirley temple an really? aged up shirley temple i mean her look at that face not, her hair is not curly enough to be shirley temple they could straighten it Okay, new scene with Mario and Luigi wandering around the desert. Uh, fun fact, I don't know if it's been uh, brought up yet. I know it gets brought up, but aside from that city that they were in, the Seems rest open. of their entire world is just a desert. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so where does their water come from? Yeah, where does their food come from? Like... Are they are they relying on like thermal power from under the Earth's crust? Or it makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, from uh, from an ecological perspective, again, we wouldn't even be questioning that if the writing was semi competent in this movie. I would dare say it would be a pretty cool idea. Just gotta remind you, they use like reptile terms for everything. Wrong side of the bed? No, they sleep in nests. And here we go. Here's one of the key... I I like this um I like this Yoshi. I don't. I know. <laughs> but I like the an I like it more for the fact that it is a full animatronic puppet more than anything else, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I it is kind of cute. In an alien 3 kind of way. <laughs> Oh, come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's that's pretty adorable. Like, they even, they even made sure that they... I want to be a part they're... of a miniature golf course. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, they even went the extra mile and made it so that its nostrils flared up when it was breathing. That's, that's, that's good attention to detail. <laughs> that was a reference that I made just now, by the way. It was a reference to an actual series of movies. Really? Yes. Uh, involving a group of, like, very, like, tiny hand-sized dinosaurs that, like, just kept ending up, like, with different people and going on stupid little adventures. They didn't talk. They were just... Oh, here's the part where he references that the whole world is a desert except for that giant... Twin, those giant towers um, in the city right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh... Oh my god, I know the movies you're talking about, too. I used to rent them from the video store when I was a kid. Yeah, I think it was the third one that they ended up on a miniature golf course. Yeah, I never saw the... I didn't even realize there was more than one. I only ever saw the first. Yeah, there's three or four of those movies. I used to rent them all the time, too. 
<laughs> I don't know why I like them. I was I was a dumb kid. I loved dinosaurs. Anything that had dinosaurs in it. God, I really hope that's a headpiece. <laughs> I really hope that Dennis Hopper didn't actually have to have his hair styled like that every time he went on set. Can you imagine the amount of hair gel? Oh! <laughs> Can you imagine the the amount of hair gel it would take to keep your hair like that? I mean, look at the fans. Look at the way it just drops off into, like, several different little tails on the back of his head. <laughs> that freaking ta tongue thing. Oh, my yeah. God. I love this line here, by the way, where he's saying, um, uh, little girls never forget the first time they were kissed by a lizard. That's what they always say. Who says that? Who has ever said that? I'd like to meet them and punch them. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Gonna play my harmonica. They're just giving people another reason to hate him because we don't already hate him because he's the villain. Yeah, kicking poor little Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> you calling him special? <laughs> what is this? Uh, it's the uh, Mars rover. <sighs> Uh, that they got from NASA for a steal. This was actually the prototype that they were going to send into space. <laughs> Look at that! They went into space! I love how Luigi's just running up with a wrench in his hand like, I'm going to get him! <laughs> I'm practicing for the Olympics! <laughs> and smash cut to them tied up. How are those little dinosaurs in this scene? Isn't the desert a vast wasteland? Yes, but I mean, things can survive in the desert. Biscuit Head, that's a fantastic comeback, don't you think? I'm adding that to my curse word repertoire. It's not even, it's not even a curse word. <laughs> exactly. My other curse word is fruitcake. And now, once again, we get more exposition, which leads me to question how it was discovered that um, by combining the missing piece of the meteorite, that it would be able to merge the two dimensions. I would also like to know how the rest of the meteorite stayed whole when this one little specific piece broke off. What's with the neck sounds? God. Uh, again, it's good sound design. Well, not really good sound design, but there you go. Can I just point out that they're being... That they've been uh, tied up with, like... Rainbow suspenders? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye, we're just gonna eat this tag. Mmm, <laughs> cardboard. Mmm, better than sand. I wonder what happened <clears throat> to that building. Yeah, the, the tower that's, like, not finished or is, like, semi-destroyed... They constantly, like, they hint at the fact that there was some sort of w war calamity that happened because of Koopa when he yeah. took out the original King Toadstool or whatever. Yeah, there, and there just, was obviously a coup. And it most likely led to, like, the rest of their world being a desert. Which is very, very um, impressive, considering that... Uh, well, we don't know how long these dinosaur people end up living, obviously, but, like, if if the coup happened, like, 20 years ago, which was what was hinted at when Daisy was brought over to the other side, 20 years to turn an entire planet into, uh, into a wasteland? That's, um, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, but not unheard of with some of the plots that we get nowadays. Uh, true, yes. Okay, so they refer to these guys as Sniffets. There's your other Mario reference for the day. Oh no, a plunger! Oh, <laughs> curse you plumbers! You laugh, but he probably can't breathe under there. I mean, if he was blocking all the airwaves on that on all the airways on that mask, yeah, I'd be panicking too. <laughs> We've done it, Mario. Mario, we're gimps now. Yeah, Luigi Mario. It's a good thing they don't check for the rest of our uniforms when we're driving out of here. Now let's go home and see Mama Luigi. <laughs> I hope she's making lots of spaghetti. Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Why? They, <laughs> those, two, 
Those two were there the whole time? Yeah, they were just hiding out behind the seats. But they were blocking the window! And <laughs> <laughs> now they're ready for disco! Yep. Because that's so I also popular. like how they are the most colorfully dressed people in that entire place. And there she is. <laughs> <laughs> More vehicular violence for no reason. He was directing traffic into that car. Yep. But yeah, um I, I want to I want to say something. I want to admit to something because I just didn't have all my cards straight about this movie ever. <clears throat> uh-huh. The uh the large woman that took the stone. You want to know something fun? I like how they call their money coupons. Ha! Uh, continue with your story. Sorry to interrupt. Um, for the longest... <laughs> what is with their heads? My don't, God. Get di- don't get distracted by the awesome special effects. <sighs> um, for the longest time, I thought that large woman... Her, I thought that her name was Peach. Really? Yes, her. I thought that she was supposed to be Peach. Why is that? What made you think that? I don't really know. I is think... it because she kisses Mario later? Yes. <laughs> and I'd just like to point out that makes Mario a, a cheating bastard because he already has a uh, a girlfriend in this movie. He doesn't kiss her on purpose. No, no. Like... He very willingly goes in for a kiss later. Um, I do have to make a bit of a, a correction to uh, to you, though. The, um, the Walk the Dinosaur song that plays later in this movie. Originally, I had thought it had been written specifically for this movie, which it hadn't. It was a, This is actually a rewritten, remixed version of the song for this movie, but it's based off of a pre-existing song that came out a few years earlier. Okay, well, thanks for telling everybody that the song is coming up. I'm pr- Again, we're assuming that they've already watched this movie, so True. they know what's coming up after the obligatory slow dance scene, where, once again, I'd like to remind everybody this was marketed as a family movie for some of the things that are coming up. Go down. There it is. The family picture. Family. <laughs> Man, Bob Hoskins really doesn't know what to do with himself here. And then he... <laughs> <laughs> Again, family pictures. How did he not get skewered on those spikes? <laughs> that is a very good question. Like, that looks very uncomfortable to dance next to. I, and maybe it's like one of those, like, rubber balls you get where you are you roll it along yourself to massage yourself. I love how she's, like, taking all these hand motions to take the necklace as, like, him, like, massaging her. Yeah, massaging and flirting with her and whatnot. And look at that, he got it. He was just after me for my jewelry. Surprise! (laughs) Here it is. Devastation. Yeah. Didn't you say when we first watched this that you actually really like this song? I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually think it's a pretty cool song, too. But, like... I love how random it is. Yeah. I mean, it it, it fits. That's for sure. <laughs> Which is why they chose it for this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this is the part that kind of confused you, because um, originally you were confused how she got the rock. Originally. Yeah. I... Yeah. I must have missed something here, or... Yeah. Here it comes right right here. See? He misses the catch, and she gets it right here. And that's why she has the rock later on in the movie. Which I think is... Ne- it needlessly complicates things. We just witnessed a, a murder... Why did they give that worm a voice? Which is why I say it was murder, because she clearly killed a sentient being. (laughs) Necessary. I love how the girl that called the goons on them was just standing there in the doorway smirking, just like, ha ha, I caught the police on you. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. 
So here's where they they get their own stompers. And see right here, he comes in and he is very accepting of it. I mean, it's only a one-time thing, and I doubt he mentions it to Daniela later, but, like, we've already established that he has a, uh, a, a girlfriend, so it seems weird to me that they would put something like that in the film. Just those plastic milk crates were enough to shield them. Yeah. It was thin glass. It was sugar glass. Exactly, yeah. I hope it was sugar glass. <laughs> Also, if those, like, stompers that they're wearing were actually real, they would be really uncomfortable to run in. Because, like, those would have to be very, very heavy. They'd be like moon shoes. Do you remember those? I do, yes. Those stupid little trampoline shoes that you'd wear and you'd run around and then trip on them and you'd skid, skid yourself on the pavement and you'd be really hurt and your parents would go, You're not using those anymore! They're dangerous! And then you'd cry, Whoa! <laughs> was that just me was I the only one that screamed why to the heavens <laughs> yes it wasn't over not being able to wear the moon shoes it was over scraping myself mm -hmm. but yeah I did actually have a pair of those and we are more than halfway through this movie and now we finally get to meet the, the, the giant butthole. Yes, this is the king of this dimension, or he was before Koopa transformed him into all the fungus that is uh, all over the place. They've mentioned this several times now about, like, the fungus is choking the city. The fungus is everywhere. And it turns out all the fungus is the king. Yeah, after he got turned into a fungus, he spread. Yes. Like fungus does. What's with the saliva? I don't like. Ew. Ugh. Yeah, it's a very ah. It's very unpleasant to look at. I mean, like, I'm sure that some fungus actually does get that moistness in there, but um, why does he leave him alive? That's a very good question. Why leave your enemy alive, even in that de-evolved form? Especially when it's causing so many problems. Like, you know that it's over... It's choking the city. It's on the... It's on the vehicles. It's... It's on the furniture. It's in your socks. It's to the window, to the walls, to the sweat drip from my... Sweetie. No, sweaty. Oh yeah, here's another running gag for this movie. Um, Koopa orders a pizza. End scene. <laughs> I, I would not be surprised at all if that's just what it said in the script. Koopa orders a uh, uh, Koopa orders a pizza. Smash cut back to the Mario Brothers. I don't even know what to say to that. Well, I mean, like. Like I said, it's going to be a running joke. It comes back a few times, but it's still so out of nowhere and it has nothing to do with anything. And oh boy, uh, time to remind you that they're plumbers again. I have an ideal. A an plumber ideal. An awful, horrible idea. Yeah. You're going to write this movie? <laughs> Mario, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> no, no, it's going to be great. I'm going to write the <laughs> script based on, based on our memoirs. <laughs> and then they're going to make a movie on it. It's going to be great. <laughs> it didn't turn out great. I would also... I, I question why they had an alarm uh, set next to... Set on pipes, by the way. It's like, someone's adjusting the pipes! Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, is, is that a thing? Have you ever heard of somebody having an alarm system built into their plumbing? I mean, maybe if it's, uh... Like... <laughs> gluck, 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 gluck! This is also the closest that we get to their overall designs, by the way. These, uh, these jumpsuits. Yeah, now they really look like the Mario Brothers. Yeah. Kinda. <laughs> but... Yeah. I cannot picture Lu the real Luigi wearing a backwards cap, though. I can. 
Especially when he's when he's uh, driving past somebody in Mario Kart. It's like um, it's like that really out of place scene in Mario Pinball where Mario's dressed as a rapper. He's got the stocking on his head and the really baggy pants. You ever seen that? No, no. You should look it up sometime. I think it's like the opening cutscene to Mario Pinball or whatever. Which, by the way, is a very bad game. Don't play it. What is with everybody's hair in this movie? Again, like, they're they're trying to evoke a certain feeling from it to make it feel more alien or like, semi-futuristic to ours. Like, is her hair supposed to be a pompadour? Because it kind of looks like a, a water wave that just kind of froze. No, I think that she was trying out for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and just happened to wander on set and they said, we'll take her. <laughs> she was ahead of her time. <laughs> Um, so I questioned whether or not these actually existed, and you told me that they do. Elevators that open on both sides? They do! They do exist! Mm Mm-hmm. Are they usually this big? Uh, no. Because I would assume that something that opens on both sides would have to be pretty, pretty large, um, if it were, if it opens on both ends to accommodate a lot of people. I mean, they're not super big, um... Some of them, maybe? Like, it varies. Like, I've used them in hotels before. And this is the point where, like, the Goombas have done absolutely nothing this whole movie, right? And this is the point where it makes it very clear that maybe at one point in the script they were written to be threatening, but they're just here for a gag now, where Luigi tricks them all into slow dancing. Or should I say, shuffling. (laughs) I can't imagine that the people in those costumes can actually move very well. I brought you raw meat. (laughs) I'm sure it's cooked. I don't want to know exactly what it is, but... It's tongues. It's tongues? Yeah, those are very clearly very large tongues. Okay. Okay. Good to know that you can identify meat so easily. Well, what else do they look like? Uh, big slices of ham? No! Maybe some, uh, liver patties? Uh... No! They are tongues! Okay. Alright. If you want to call them tongues, we'll call them tongues. Her hair changed into a turd! <laughs> oh my god, it literally is a scoop of soft serve, isn't it? <laughs> She, she, she can be in those uh, weird Japanese commercials where the guy eats his own head. <laughs> the ice cream commercial. Jesus Christ. I eat little baby's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> How did she hide that? Like, she literally stuck it into the butt flap of her, her dress. And look at the... It just... Mm. <laughs> see, I think it would have been a great dark twist if they just cut away and we never see her again. Yeah. <laughs> she she grabbed the shoe, gotta remember to take the shoe. Gotta remember to take her shoe. What if a police officer needs a shoulder massage? Very good point. I mean, I know whenever you're feeling stressed, I just dig my heel into your into the back of your head. Oh, you don't. No. Hey, they got Star Fox feet. Yang. Oh my god, they've amputated their legs. (laughs) Did they ever have legs? (laughs) There's that deep voice that you love so much. And there's there's our toad one again. He brought her radio voice. He found vegetables. Yeah. And then we run into these guys again. <laughs> Look, 
I like how through this whole movie she has just looked so weirded out. <gasps> Why did he just play the harmonica just there? <laughs> well, I mean, what else is he gonna do? But I mean, like, like I was saying, Daisy looks. <laughs> Daisy looks so out of it for most of this movie, like she's in a trance or she's just bored out of her skull. Film theory, Princess Daisy is actually high off her heels during the entire movie. <laughs> high off her heels. <laughs> I like that. So this is the last time that we see Iggy and Spike in this movie. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they've like suddenly turned against Koopa. Yeah, like there was no build up to it or anything. They just got arrested for celebrating his downfall during the bar scene. And now they're just going to they're going to go through that door and they're going to walk right out of the movie. I wouldn't be surprised if the actors just walked right off the set after they were done filming this scene. It's time for us to get out of this movie. I'm sure that we will not be missed. Salutations. Yeah, I mean that's that's literally it. Like there there's no um there's no sort of payoff at all for for their characters or anything. They were planned for the sequel. We don't know that. <laughs> And I mean, even movies that do get sequels uh, at least have some sort of payoff or epilogue scene for most of their characters. He jumped sideways. He did, yes. He jumped sideways and they just cut away. And also, this is... Even if he was doing like the full Superman, there is no way that hook would have caught him, by the way. It caught him by his rainbow suspender. It's the ones that he's not wearing anymore? He's still wearing it. See? Oh, I'm, well, goes to show how much I pay attention. <laughs> and this was the inspiration for that one game in uh, Mario, uh, Mario 64 DS where you have to draw the trampolines. That was a fun mini game. I wish I was playing that right now. I wish I was playing Kirby. After this. <laughs> Which suddenly made me think, like, what would a Kirby movie be like? Don't question it. Don't think about things like that. Let's think about how Yoshi got his chain free of the wall. Yeah, let's, let's question that for a second. Be which makes me think that there was a lot of stuff that was just cut from this movie entirely. Because there's no... He was shown chained up and trying to break his chains during his first scene. And now, even with that stabbed into his side, he somehow managed to get the chain... It looks like he got the chain off. And you could remove that the whole time? <laughs> oh my god. I remember, yeah. I do remember these. These were an actual thing. Like the laser pointers where you point at the screen to make your selection on the menus. They used to have these in like um, a bunch of family owned restaurants uh, that I used to go to as a kid. They went out of style really fast though. I have never seen that before. Really? Yeah. Mm. You've never seen a uh, double door elevators? I've never seen computers that run on laser guns. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen those before, yes. And like I said, they weren't around for very long. You know, you could freeze frame there and make it look like Mario was about to shove something up Luigi's ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I cursed that. I... <laughs> no, it's fine. We're we're demonetized anyway. I don't give a shit about editing out curses curses anymore. I'm done playing YouTube's game. Yay! It it was a radar dish. Yeah. <laughs> radar He's mushroom. just swiveling around like it was like, uh, one of those one of those little umbrellas in a drink. <laughs> I mean, 
given the setting that they're in right now, I don't doubt that they would use mushrooms as umbrellas in drinks. Yeah, yeah. Might give their drink some flavor. <laughs> it's so nice that they, they just happen to be on the same floor. Oh, okay, so it is actually a pretty good thing that uh, that she had the rock. Because then we get... Because then that explains why this scene exists. And I guess that scene is done. Like, this is... This bothers me in film, where you have these really quick short scenes that either just exist to establish one little fact or to show what a character is doing at that exact moment, and then you just cut away. And this movie is filled with those. It's just, it, it tells me that they didn't have any idea how to convey a lot of information. Meet my dad's turtle head. Midori. <laughs> Midori. It's his mushroom head. No. Do, do I need to explain my joke? No, I'm making a better joke. Mario, shake his hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just get your hand right in there. Shake it. Yeah, just get it in real deep up to the elbow. I'm sure there's a hand in there somewhere. Okay, so now Mario's going off to rescue his own girlfriend, who, I remind you, he did not know was kidnapped this entire friggin' movie. And the, that plot point literally only exists to separate Mario from Luigi and Daisy at this point so that they can get recaptured for like five minutes. Ha! Comedy! Don't bring me down. Don't bring me down. And so here she's trying to go with the rock. She got the she got the rock piece. Yeah, I find it weird that the entrance is like no longer like blocked off. Like it, that it's blocked off now, but like before there was like a busy city street right outside yeah. of that entrance. Well, it did say that they were closing down that street and like they've got guards around it right now. So, but the, well, why didn't they ever close it down before? That is a very good point, especially since like the meteorite is down here, which I assume is very important. She, so why is it just open where anybody can get at it? She was really casual after getting zapped. It's like, ah, they zapped me. Ha ha, I got it. <sighs> Oh, well, I guess they got that stone now. <laughs> guess I won't put up a fight. Better lie back and think of England. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Uh, see, that's kind of cute. Dorky Goombas. Yeah. He's trying to color in and he can't color inside the lines. This is a good use of silence. I actually really like this joke. And that one girl is always, always smoking. That, I thought, was actually a pretty decent joke. I think that's a really stupid joke. She doesn't even know who Mario is. Well, like, she was just told he was Daniela's girlfriend. I, I know. He's Daniela's girlfriend. <laughs> but, but like, it's like, what, your boyfriend Mario is here? Hey, Mario! Yeah, I actually thought it was pretty good. It had a nice build-up and a good payoff. And that one, that joke didn't work. Yeah, except for Angelica. She's from Queens. She's all right. Hey, Spider-Man's from Queens. And? Queens is a nice place. <clears throat> they even had an entire show called King of Queens. 
Ah, oh, my precious. Precious. <laughs> Mustard the Goombas! <laughs> and don't forget to catch up! Yep, quick, give them all, uh... <laughs> better give them all, uh, super scopes. I love the fact that Koopa is also a, a, a germaphobe in this movie. Like, we haven't spoken about it yet because it's mostly only been when he was shaking hands with, like, uh, Mario and Luigi. But when he was holding that walkie-talkie, like, he had it wrapped in, uh, he had it wrapped in napkins so he didn't have to touch it. Oh boy, we're having fun now! Yeah, here's the thing about this scene. It is obviously way too slow to actually be a chase scene. Like, they do all of this twisting with the camera to make it seem like they're going much faster than they actually are. But they obviously did not have the ability to make them go a any faster. Just this freaking music. Yeah, it's, it's extreme. Just the guitar riffs. And he's just dead now. Yeah. <laughs> he's just gone forever. Yeah. I mean, it's, seriously, it sounds like... God, what does this music remind me of? Oh, no! Note that we did not actually see the impact. <laughs> this, it was... Now an they're screaming. Oh. Whoops. Knocked my mic. But this was another part that actually made you laugh pretty hard. The the Goomba riding the other one down the shaft. <laughs> because it's so stupid. Yep. Slow. Mo and it stops right there. <laughs> Look, that has to... That is one of the cheesiest the blue screen. magic carpet ride. <laughs> that has to be the worst blue screen effect in this entire... Um, this entire movie. I don't think green screen was a was a thing yet when this movie came out. They were still using like br blue screen to uh, chroma everything. And why were the guards that had Luigi and Daisy just out on the street rather than inside the castle somewhere? Oh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> they had to go and let the pizza guy in. It, it, it makes about as much sense as anything else in this movie. Is that a problem that the Goombas have had before Mario and Luigi showed up? Like, that was never established. They danced once in this entire movie. Man, that was a nice transition. Yeah. How did putting a bullet bill inside of a shoe cause it to launch? Like, don't those shoes launch forward anyways? Why does putting a bullet in them make them rocket forward... It's something like that's that's like a power cartridge it needs to run, which um, which doesn't really make sense because like and you would need a, a huge amount of force to actually lift a person off the ground with boots like that. OK, man, it's a good thing that uh, that wall of fungus was there. Yeah, it's also a good thing that it's strong enough to support the human body, especially Bob Hoskins's body. <laughs> I love the guy, but he was obviously not in the best of shape when he was making this movie. Yeah, but... Yeah. I'm willing to bet that the only reason they hired him, too, was because they heard his Brooklyn accent um, when he was doing Who Framed <laughs> Roger Rabbit. <laughs> er, he, she pinched my nose! I'm knocked out now! <laughs> <laughs> Just swivels in the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's getting electrocuted. She gets a white streak in her hair from getting electrocuted. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> With this, I can provide a dowry to be Frankenstein's second bride. <laughs> I didn't know Frankenstein was polyamorous. <laughs> I mean, do you know how many men he's made up of? No. Do you? Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay, we've uh, we've settled that, so. I'm Luigi Mario. Got a problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> this scene, 
<laughs> this tunnel always makes me think of Koala Javil with the way that she looks when she's running down it. Yeah, again. She's the like, silhouette of Koala. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same guy who fell off the uh fell off the roof earlier, by the way. Same costume. <laughs> they they're very slowly chasing each other. It's a slow speed chase. They're running faster than the cars. Seriously, yeah. Well, I mean, traffic jams in New York, pretty bad. And that's the plot of the movie. No, Cruella! Don't do it, you have so many puppies to kill! <laughs> We've gotta stop her! Quick, everybody over here, away from her! We gotta stop her, but we'll get you girls back to Brooklyn first. And this is probably the scene that most people remember this movie for. The, uh, the ba -bomb scene. A ba -bomb. Yes. Oh. I love the fact that they build this thing up as something that is like a weapon of mass destruction. And then... It's so cute. <laughs> oh. 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 It's very slowly coming towards it. I have a ranged weapon, but I'm just going to step back. So yeah, it falls away. But the, the payoff for this is actually uh, pretty good. But it doesn't make sense why everybody was so afraid of it. <clears throat> How did he... Oh, never mind. I, I was about to ask a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I just, I missed how he got out of that, uh, that thing that was hanging that they were in. Um, and, like, I wonder how, like, like, it's just we weird. What Was it, like, some sort of, uh, cut where they decided to add more to the movie because he ends up back in that same thing? No, he ends up... Uh... Well, we'll see, but yeah, they just climb down off of it into the street because at some point it just lowers down. I like how her hair also gets uh, skeletized here. Yeah, fossilized. <laughs> skeletized, fossilized, whatever. <gasps> Different kind of eyes. Oh, oh, oh. This makes no sense, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel the power of dance. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why these weapons are stupid. That's literally all you have to do is if the flame on the end goes out, you're SOL. Again, like, this was actually a really mind-blowing scene for me when I was We're a kid. Merging! And that's somebody's fetish. Jesus Christ. Midori, stop. I will, because that one actually heavily disturbs me. Yeah. Like, the fact that she is the one that withstands the Force makes no sense to me. Like, that is literally the, the way that they justify her having to be, like... Koopa's prisoner the whole time why he's so obsessed with her she's apparently the only one that can like stand next to this thing and put it in without getting killed which um could have been better established see look those are super scopes how over does, there how does he know like what Brooklyn is well, he's been there before, but yeah, I don't think he ever really learned the name of the place. Here's the line. There it is. <laughs> he said the word. We have ourselves a meme. Oh, and there's Scapelli, like that sleazy gangster guy from the beginning of the movie. He was so integral to the plot. Oh, ha, 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 ha. He was turned into a monkey. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, yeah, he was. Like everybody in the background is just laughing. It's like, he's a monkey. <laughs> I can't get over this. I can't get over the fact that they used a bunch of like surplus um, super scopes 
to make those Devo guns. <laughs> I'm just gonna flail my arms around. <laughs> Why were their heads spinning? Because kids movie. It, well, yeah. It's still going. Have you ever known a wind-up toy to go this long? And also that fuse is not that long. Wouldn't it have been smarter to swerve out of the way or back up after that or what have you? Like, you, you don't want to be anywhere near the ball, right? Seriously, yeah. If everybody knows what it can do. He's like, oh, thank God I stopped myself from running over and causing the ball to blow up. I'm just going to sit here and wait for it to pass by. Hopefully it'll pass by. It's a good thing they cut away before that thing fell onto its back. Right? Yeah. I love how the people around him are just like, <laughs> yeah, harmonica. <laughs> yep. And so all of these wonderful characters we've come to know and love the entire movie over are just uh, coming back for the finale to do one thing and that's it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. Flippers! <laughs> Ser seriously. Bullseye! <laughs> That wasn't even comedic placement. Seriously, yeah. De-evolution rays! <laughs> Which for some reason takes forever to work on him. Again. Like, it's very inconsistent. There's your product placement, by the way. The Reebok. <laughs> Reebok is the bomb. Ha ha ha. Seriously, everybody was afraid of that. That was... Honestly, a pretty pitiful felt, explosion. Yeah, and he suddenly yeah. went diagonally in midair. <laughs> yeah, he went straight up, turned on a curve on his way down, and landed in that thing. And here's the jump scare from when I was a kid. Did it actually scare you? When I was a kid, and when I saw this for the first time and wasn't expecting it, yeah, that actually was pretty. That actually did manage to scare me the first time. I mean, they didn't even try to make him look like Bowser. At all. Yeah. I, and they don't focus the camera on him for very long. Like, like what is this? Ah. Yeah, he just he just sits there for a second. He roars, and then he gets turned into the glab go glab glab and then just turns into a puddle of slime. The heck is a glab go glab glab You haven't seen that before? No, I thought that he looked more like a salamander. I am the glab go glab glab and I love Bowser. Books. Okay. You you need to look that up when you get a chance. Okay. It's very surreal. Anyway. So yeah, that's how our... Vi Honestly, I think that's an appropriate way to take out the villain because he was not that interesting to begin with. So why should his death or defeat be interesting at all either? Peace. And Mara's freaking waving like a princess. Yeah. It's just like... <laughs> No, like, I'm so speechless now. <laughs> again, John Leguizamo just looks really uncomfortable in that scene. Where, like, again, he just doesn't look like he knows what to do anymore. It's like, peace. The, the peace. It's a good thing we had these paint rollers set up for just such an occasion. And all the Goombas are dancing. Yep. And now, for some reason, magic. Like, somehow, Koopa being defeated changes the king back to normal. Even though it was never magical to begin with, it was co entirely science fiction how the evolution and de-evolution worked. I want to know if that guy ever did anything else for acting. <laughs> I don't even know who he was. Neither do I. Like, I'm sure he's in the credits somewhere, but he had exactly one line and appeared on, on screen once and now for some reason they need to do this in order to open up the portal yeah they never had to before and there she is still yep well she's there forever now 
And now we get the uh, unfortunate, we can't be together because we live in different worlds and I have to stay behind and help the reconstruction effort. Is all very sad, but I mean, again, these two never had any chemistry, so I feel absolutely nothing. Thank you for repeating her, Mario. That is literally what she had just said. I'm feeling this connection. OTP right here. <laughs> It's really sad when Daisy and Luigi ha in the games actually have much better chemistry than the actors portraying them on the screen. Daisy and Luigi have chemistry in the games? Yeah, yeah. They actually have a lot better um, interaction with one another in any of the games where they're featured than Daisy and Luigi had in this in this movie. I need to look those up, honestly, because mm -hmm. I know that Daisy and Luigi are a thing, but... I don't think that I've ever actually, like, seen any of those instances. Yeah, it's mostly in, like, the the sports games and the spin-offs and whatnot, when the two of them are, like, paired together. Hmm. Like, um, in Mario Party 7, I think it is, you have the team mode, where if you choose two characters, every combination of two characters has their own title or their own description. Like, Toad and Toadette have true companions, things like that. And if you pair up Mario and Peach or Luigi and Daisy, it's something really cute, I believe. I have to double check those. So now we cut to three weeks later. And what's her face lives with them now. Or maybe she's just there to help cook dinner. Or lunch, considering that it's still daylight out. Maybe it's the... No, I'm not going to argue time zones with you. So now maybe they're yeah. making spaghetti for breakfast. So yeah, 3 weeks later, apparently the Goombas are still coming over and glocka, are glocka, glocka. yeah. And here's our sequel hook, folks. That will never happen. As a kid, I really wanted to know what the hell was going on. Again, like I have I have some nostalgic attachment to this movie. <laughs> But there you go. That title is a lie. Don't shove that in my face. I like how the um the end credit song here, almost unreal, gets the very first credit. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never heard of like a movie doing that before. Yeah. Oh, let, let, let's see. Let's what, see. <laughs> Bertha. The King, Lance Henriksen. You're kidding me. That was Lance Henriksen. Oh my god, man, what were you doing in this movie? Who's Lance Henriksen? He is a fantastic actor. He's like, um, he's a lot like Dennis Hopper or Bob Hoskins in that he's been in a, just a huge amount of movies. There were five different nuns? <laughs> <laughs> I like that that's where you immediately go to. <laughs> but as you were saying about, uh... It, Lance Henriksen, he's just... He's just been in a hell of a lot of movies of all different sorts and qualities. Like if you look up his IMDb, it's probably like um it's probably like a mile long now. But yeah, I I never knew that he was actually in this. He was in here for one scene and one line. What else so, was he in? Give me an example. Um well, just for um sort of on the same spectrum of quality, he was in uh um Pumpkinhead 2. Uh, actually, I believe he was in all the Pumpkinhead movies, including the first one, which is actually a really good B-movie film. Well, how about something good that he was in? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> no, I'm trying to... I know he's been in a ton of really good movies. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. I just know the name. And also that he was in Pumpkinhead. Shut up. It's like Lance Hendrickson, he's an amazing no. actor who is in lots of movies. Yes. Like Pumpkinhead and Pumpkinhead 2. Midori? And... Midori? Nothing I said was factually incorrect. I was just really surprised to see his name attached to this movie. I never knew that before. Oh, that's who we had to blame for the hairstyles? <laughs> Wait, I missed it. What? 
Uh, one of them was uh, Shelly Hutchinson. Oh. And I, I missed who the other one was, but yeah, they had hairstylists in mm-hmm. there. <laughs> I'll give the set designers props. You guys did all right. You You made that... You made this world look pretty unique, and if it had been in an actually uh, good movie, like uh, you guys would have been the stars of it. I saw a construction mill shop, and I'm like, "Oh, is that what you called the set where the archaeological dig site is?" They have a medic list listed on there, by the way. They had a chimpanzee. Yep. Koopa's billboards by Studio Facilities. <laughs> oh, second so, unit yeah. film crew. Yep. Well, yeah, they had to. They had to have somebody who was shooting the B roll, right? You forget just how many people it takes to make a movie. Like a lot of the blame or the credit gets put on the actors or the directors or the producers, but like, it's real easy to forget that a a, a movie, a game, anything like that is a massive team effort and undertaking. One of us is not nearly as stupid as all of us together. Exactly. You get it. You really get it. Pixar? Pixar? What? Yeah, I saw like I saw the Pixar in there. I like how like they just call it the Koopa creature. What uh what Koopa turns into at the end of the movie. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Tiger Mother Town? <laughs> Oh, you missed that. Guess who performs this song in this? Who? The Goombas. It said, uh, performed by The Goombas. Original motion picture soundtrack available on Capital Compact Discs and Cassettes, a division of EMI Records Group, North America. Oh yeah, this was back during the time when you could actually buy the soundtrack for a movie, and they would use that to try and make back a bunch of, uh, money if the movie did really poorly. I don't think the soundtrack did very well for this movie, though. So, yeah, that was the Super Mario Brothers movie. Thanks for uh, sticking around with us, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, because I sure did. What is this? I have never actually seen this before. Oh! It's two guys from Nintendo. (gasps) (laughs) Okay, so... That's what happened to them. They're pitching the idea for a video game to Nintendo. (laughs) Oh my god, I've never seen that before. That was a pleasant surprise. (laughs) Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's the end of the movie. That's the end of even the credits. And I hope that you enjoyed watching the movie alongside... With our commentary alongside it. Yeah. I, hope, oh. I hope we made it a bit more entertaining for you all. And I hope that you will all come back for another one. We're not going to stick to just movies. We want to give some other stuff uh, a try down the line as well. Uh, I've, got, I've got a few shows that I would like us to watch. Well, it's your pick next time, so we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll, we'll see what I pick out, everybody. Yep, bye-bye. We love y'all.